Hello children, welcome to our educational TV program on SBC. The topic I've chosen for you today is motion, which is physics, IGCSE physics, and I am Mr. Gopal from the English River Secondary School. Let us look at some of the objectives as laid down in your syllabus. You will have to be able to define the speed and calculate average speed from total distance and total time. You have to plot and interpret speed time graph, distance time graph. You will have to be able to recognize from the shape of the graph the type of motion that is happening and also calculate distance uh, from the speed time graph. You will also, you should also be able to define and understand the meaning of acceleration, deceleration, and uh, can exist to the changing speed of an object. And you should be able to state the acceleration of free fall for a body near the surface of the Earth. And for extended candidates, you will have to be able to tell me the difference between speed and velocity. We use one for the other inadvertently, but they are not the same. And also calculate acceleration, etc., etc. Now, when you go to school, either walking or traveling by bus or the car, at any one time, you are, you are not going at the same speed throughout the journey. At time you go faster, at time you go slower. Your speed at any one time is your instantaneous speed. But the speed with which you reach school is taken by the total distance covered divided by the total time and you get your average speed. Therefore, your average speed is a total distance divided by total time. And what is the speed? Remember, you have to be able to define the speed. So speed is a rate of change of distance. Whenever we say rate, it means that something is being divided by time. And rate of change of distance, mathematically, you have to write it distance divided by time, and the symbol we use is V is equal to S over T. Now, look at the symbols. The symbol for speed is not S, but V. The symbol for distance is not D, but S, and T for time. So get used to this. In mathematics, maybe you use it differently. But in science, in physics, these are the symbols that are used. Just remember SUVAT. S-U-V-A-T, where S stands for distance, U, the initial velocity, V, the final velocity, A, for acceleration, and T, for time. You have got only these five dimensions in motion. Distance, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Now, what is the difference between velocity and the speed? Velocity is a vector quantity. It has got a magnitude and a direction, whereas speed is just a vector quantity. It is a scalar quantity. It just got a magnitude. For example, when I say I'm traveling at 15 meters per second, I'm talking of speed, but if I say I'm traveling at 15 meters per second north. This is velocity because I have added uh, direction to it. This is the only difference between speed and velocity. Now, let us look at the formula. In physics, you will have to be using formula, formulae for calculations. And this is, I will say, the tools that you will have to be using to solve any problem. Therefore, speed is equal to distance divided by time. You have got three dimensions here, speed, distance, and time. And you should be able to manipulate your formula to make S the subject of the formula. For example, S is equal to VT. Distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. But if you have to calculate time, which formula are you going to use? I'm putting it to you. 
you can have three formula from the original formula of v equal to s divided by t already here. You've got two. The third formula I want you to come up with is finding time. Which formula are you going to use to find time? So time, you just take distance, you divide by velocity, you will get time. And I hope you got this correct. Now, try this one. A ball rolls down a ramp. The time it takes to move from x to y is measured. Look at the diagram. The ball is rolling down, and I want to know the, uh, the average velocity of the ball from x to y. And here the time has been measured. Now, what other quantity must be measured in order to calculate the speed of the ball? Do you need to know the angle of the slope, the diameter of the ball, the distance between x and y, or the height of the ramp to calculate the speed? Your formula will help you. Your formula is the original one. Velocity or speed is equal to distance divided by time. Time is given and you have to find velocity, therefore you just have to find distance, therefore the answer is C, distance between X and Y. Okay, this is the formula you use. Now, let us have a look at graph. We will study first the velocity time graph. Here we are. Let us take the graph which is in green first. Starting from zero time, you can see that the graph is sloping upward. It means that the velocity is increasing with time. So what is the movement of the object? If the velocity is increasing with time, therefore it is going faster and faster, therefore it is accelerating. And since it is a straight line, it means it is accelerating constantly. What is the difference between the green line and the purple line? In both the similarity is that in both cases, acceleration is taking place. But the difference is that the purple line, since its uh, speed has increased more in less time, therefore it is rapid acceleration. Okay? The slope of the line gives you an indication of the acceleration. The steeper it is, it means that the acceleration is more rapid. Now, when the graph levels off, it is horizontal, it means that the speed is staying the same minute after a minute or second after a second. If the speed is not changing, this is constant velocity and the line is sloping down, it is reducing speed, and that is constant deceleration. I say constant because it is a straight line. If it is not constant, it's going to be a curve, not a straight line. Now, look at this question. You have an object moving, it studies a part of the graph numbered one, two, three, and four. And I want you to tell me which section of the graph shows acceleration and which section shows deceleration. Study it. One is acceleration and three is deceleration. You can see, one, it is accelerating, the speed is increasing. Two, it's constant speed. Three, is reducing speed, therefore deceleration. And four, again, constant speed. But the answer for the question here is one and three. Clap for yourself, got it correct? Now, look at this question here. 
you've got a car traveling with a uniform speed of 20 meters per second. Another word for constant speed is uniform speed. 20 meters per second for 5 seconds. Now, if you multiply 20 by 5, you have multiplied velocity times time. And velocity times times give you distance. And when you look at these things here, taking 20 meter by 5, you get uh, a shaded rectangle, which is representing area under the graph. And the area under the graph is a distance covered. And this is true for any graph. For a speed time graph or velocity time graph, the area under the graph is a distance travel for any shape of graph. This is true. So finishing with uh, velocity time graph, we move on now with a distance time graph. So it shows here how the distance uh, changes over a period of time. This graph and the original graph on uh, velocity time graph, they have the same shape. But here, what is the line is sloping upwards, the green line sloping upward showing? It is showing that the distance covered is increasing with time. But it is if the, 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 the slope is the same, the slope is the same, therefore, distance divided by time gives you speed. So what it is showing is that the green, li green line is showing you a constant speed. Remember, in the original graph, it was showing constant acceleration. The velocity time graph showed constant acceleration, but in this case here, it is showing constant speed. And the purple line also is showing constant speed, but a greater increase in the speed. Now, the horizontal line, it is showing the same distance time after time. This shows that the object the, is stationary, it's not moving. For example, you take your car, you go to work, you park your car from your home to your site of work. The distance is the same at 7, at 8, at 9, at 10. It is the same. At 3, you take your car, you come home. So during all this time, the line was horizontal. It shows it's stationary. And the line sloping down, it is showing the return journey. Don't confuse the speed time graph to the distance time graph. You have to be able to interpret. Okay? So I will tell you at home, take some time, study the two graphs, and let the graph speak to you what is happening, and compare them. Finishing with speed, velocity, now we come with acceleration. When do we say that something is accelerating? Something is accelerating if the speed or the velocity increases. If, let us say, you are traveling at 20 meters per second, you increase it, you make it 50 meters per second. You have accelerated. If you do it in 5 seconds, or if you do it in 25 seconds. If you do it in 5 seconds, your acceleration is going to be more than if you do the increase in 20 seconds or 25 seconds. Therefore, the formula for calculating acceleration is V minus U divided by T. V is final velocity. U is initial velocity divided by time taken. You will get your acceleration. This graph is also, I mean, this equation is also written as A is equal to delta V divided by T. 
Delta, as a small triangle, which is a Greek alphabet, means a small change. A change in velocity, final velocity minus initial velocity is a change in velocity divided by time taken. You can have this type of equation also at time in examination. Now, try this one. A car takes 8 seconds to accelerate from rest to 28 meters per second. What is the average acceleration of the car? Work it out. Apply your formula. V minus U divided by T. And what is the acceleration? I give you a minute to do the calculation. Don't just watch, try. Now, what is V, the final velocity? That is 28 meters per second. Initial velocity is zero. Why is the initial velocity zero? If you read the question, it says the object was at rest. At rest means it was not moving. Not moving means velocity is zero. Therefore, the change in velocity is 28 meters per second. Now, you divide it by time, which is 8 seconds. 28 divided by 8 gives you 3.5 meters per second square. Why per second square? Because velocity was distance over time, and you divide it by another time. Therefore, it's time is square, it's second is square, because it's being divided by twice time, times and time. Therefore, it meters per second is square. You should be careful with your units. Velocity is meters per second. But acceleration is meters per second square. Now, look at this word deceleration. And this is a mistake many people make. They think that deceleration means reduce acceleration. No. Deceleration does not mean reduce acceleration. Deceleration means negative acceleration. And you can have negative acceleration only when the final velocity is less than the initial velocity. Go to your equation. If the final velocity is less than the initial, let us say you are traveling at 50 meters per second, and then you travel at 25 meters per second, here you will have to be taking 25 minus 50, which is minus 25 divided by time. You will get a negative answer, and this is what, only the negative acceleration is deceleration, which is the result of reducing speed. I mention again, deceleration is not reduce acceleration. It's negative acceleration. And I want you to look at this question and answer this one. An object is moving with uniform deceleration. Which statement describes its motion? Is it the rate of change of speed is decreasing? Is it the speed is constant? Is speed is decreasing or is speed is increasing? If you look at the four responses, you will have a dilemma between A and C. B is definitely wrong, D is definitely wrong, but you will have a dilemma between A and C, and the answer is C. Remember I said, for you to have deceleration, the speed must go down. Now, there is another acceleration, we just... Uh, uh, symbol it G, and this is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, I put a question to you. If you go on top of a building and drop a big stone and a small stone, which one will reach the ground first? You go on the top of a tall building, you take a big stone and a small stone and you drop them together. 
which one will reach the ground first? I hope you did not do the mistake that Aristotle did because he thought that the big stone will reach the ground first. But this guy, Galileo Galilei, he proved Aristotle wrong. He went on top of the Tower of Pisa, which is a leaning tower in Italy, and he dropped a big and a small mass from the top of the tower, and both masses reach the ground at the same time. Both will reach the ground at the same time because both of them is accelerating to the same extent. And this acceleration, due to gravity, is called the acceleration of free fall. And the value is 9.8 meters per second or more. This is precisely, but for us, we will be using 10 meters per second in order to ease mathematical calculations. Now, if you jump out of a plane, you will be dropping down at the rate of 10 meters in one second. 10 meters in one second, it means that in one second, you will move, let us say, the height of two, a two-story building, which is a lot. And in the, sec 20, in the second second, you will be moving, dropping a height of 20 meters, and so on. And this is a lot. But at the same time, you are falling, you are moving through the air, the air will try to support you, will offer air resistance. And as you move faster and faster, the air resistance will increase until it reaches a point that the air resistance, the upward force supporting you, is equal to the force of gravity which is pulling you down. Is that this? You have a mass of 90 kg, you are out of the plane, you are going down. The only force acting on you is 900 Newton, which is due to gravity, your weight. And, uh, but as you are moving down, the air resistance starts increasing. So in the second instance, the air resistance has reached 300 Newton. Therefore, you, you will accelerate less. As the air resistance increases, your acceleration will be reduced again. But when the upward force and the downward force are the same, now you are not going to accelerate. You will go at a constant velocity, which, is, which we call terminal velocity. So this terminal velocity is the highest velocity that an object attains falling through a fluid. Usually we call it air, but even in water it is the same. This is because of the upward drag when it becomes equal to the downward force of gravity. And remember, since the upward and the downward force are the same, the resultant force is going to be zero. So if the resultant force is zero, your mass is there, the acceleration will be zero because in order to satisfy the equation, F is zero, the mass, mass cannot be reduced or increased, so the acceleration will have to be zero in order to satisfy the equation. So remember, when there is no resultant force on an object, the object moves at a constant speed. It does not accelerate. Okay? Now, the value for G, I mentioned it earlier, it is accurately known as 9.8 meters per second per second. You can, or meters per second square. But for IGCSE, for your level, we will accept you to use 10 meters per second square in order to reduce the complexity of mathematical tasks. It is very easy to multiply numbers by 10. 10 times 1550, but if I tell you 9.8 times 15, you will have a difficulty here, I'm sure. Now, we finished with uh, things. Let us have a look 
at some questions to reinforce what we've been learning so far. The diagram shows the speed time graph for a car. Now, which area represents the distance travel while the car is accelerating? I mentioned earlier, distance is area under the graph. You have got two areas under the graph here, X and Y. Which one is representing the distance travel while the car is accelerating? Answer is A. Look at this one. Remember, in a vacuum, there is no re air resistance, there is nothing, therefore there is no air resistance. So, which statement describes the acceleration of the ball? I hope you got D, because the acceleration is going to be the same, because there is no air resistance, it will not decrease. A last one. A small steel ball is dropped from a low balcony. You ignore air resistance because if there is rare air resistance, acceleration will decrease. As we discussed while discussing terminal velocity. But without air resistance, which statement describes its motion? I hope you got A. It will, it will move with constant acceleration. Therefore, the answer is A. I will stop here for today. Again, I will invite you to go to your books, read the chapter, attempt the end of chapter questions. You have the contact number of your teacher. You can contact your teacher. And remember to stay safe at home. Thank you.